Hello, welcome to today's tutorial. We'll be exploring uh, VCPKG uh, cross-platform library manager that can help you with acquisition and installation of various open source C++ libraries. And today specifically I will talk about integration with Visual Studio in classic VCPKG mode. So uh, let's start with some basics. First, what you need to do is to install VCPKG, which is very simple. You need to clone the Git repository and then run this uh, bootstrap file, which will perform the installation on your computer. Or if you are on Linux, there is a shell script uh, to perform this installation. So that's it. And uh, you can start using VCPKG. But it's worth to mention some basic terminology. As I mentioned, we will exploring the classic mode, which, which is using uh, two commands, uh, specifically vcpkg install and remove. By this command, you will install centrally your library and you can use it across the various projects. In opposite to this, it's a manifest mode, which gives you ability to associate the concrete library version and configuration with concrete projects. So that's the two operating modes of VCPKG. For the terminology, there are two important terms, and one is port, and the second one is triplet. So the port is a version recipe, how to produce the package. And VCPKG runs port recipe files to download, source, run, build based on these recipe descriptions. The triplet capture configuration of your build environment like CPU, operating system, compiler and runtime environment. So these two things are very important for our additional talk. So port the recipe, what PCPKG needs to do, and the triplet, its configuration of your environment. So now we know enough terminology and we can start using uh, PCPKG and the first uh, command, what we should know is search command. So here it is and uh, for the PowerShell it's in format PCPKG space search space name of the library you want to found. And uh, basically the output of this command is a list of all possible OpenCV for in my case uh, ports or let's say configuration I can achieve by VCPKG. So uh, go through, there is GStreamer, there is FMPEG and DNN module and uh, different kind of options. After the search command, which lists all the available options, we would like to install one of these options. So there is uh, this install 
command, which is in format vcpkg, install, name of the library, and specific configuration in square bracket. So in PowerShell vcpkg, install OpenCV4, and in square bracket, I would like to use, for example, not the GStream, but ffmpeg. And uh, I can hit enter, and basically what the vcpkg does, it uh, run the port red setting, vcpkg download all the source and prerequisites built based on this recipe and produce the final library which I can use in my projects. And this install command take a while, you know, based on what you want. It can take from 20 minutes up to one hour, but it's really depend on the configuration you want to achieve. And uh, so I will not run this install command because you will sit here for a while, but basically it gives you this kind of outputs and uh, preview what packages are downloaded and built and what's basically happening in the background. And then at the end, it will give you, let's say, some preview how to configure your fire projects. So this was very basic install command. And I hope that you do not hit enter yet because there's something you need to know and it's the triplet because by default as we can see the OpenCV4 was installed as x86 architecture and uh, I really don't want to use this architecture nowadays so I want to modify my install command a slight bit in format of install, name of the library, now the configuration, and then I want to use triplet, which is x64 and the windows. So we got triplet capture the target build environment. And uh, so if we are in PowerShell, install OpenCV4 FMPEG as before, and we will put here x64 and windows. Now, if you want to install OpenCV4 with FFMX support, x64 architecture, now you can hit enter. Finally, this installation command it will take around 30 minutes to perform the installation of OpenCV and after the process it will print you very basic information how to use this library and there's maybe something uh, what to know about install command because if you want to install for example, two or more specific option of OpenCV library, you can specify them in a square bracket divided by comma. So in a format OpenCV4, then FFmpeg, comma, GStream, comma, DNN, and so on, and so on. Then you will specify architecture x64 windows. If uh, there was something installed already and you want to rebuild this, you will be asked by VCPKG to use records option. And uh, what I'm using, because VCPKG can be space consuming because of downloading all the prerequisites and building all these prerequisites, I'm using command clean after build. And uh, I think that's something 
you should know as well. So after this uh, install command is done, we need to do one more thing to start using our library. And in classic mode, it's command vcpkg integrate install. And the response is all builds C++ project can now include and installed libraries. Linking will be handled automatically. So this is a great message because everything after the restart of Visual Studio should be available for us and the linking will be handled automatically. So now let's have a look on Visual Studio. Right now I can see that I could not, or the Visual Studio cannot resolve, include header files. But I also know that I install Solution Platform X64, not X86. So I will switch to X64 and you can see that currently I can resolve these include header files. If I will open properties and uh, have a look on compile generals, I do not have specified any additional include directories. And in linker, I do not specify any additional library dependencies and uh, any additional dependencies here. So everything is managed by VCPKG itself and of course by Visual Studio. So currently we have our project configured, we can build the source code and produce the executable file. And what's really cool about VCPKG integration with Visual Studio, but this applies as well for CMake, uh, CMake option, is that uh, all the DLLs are basically copied to the folder where your executable module is. So you can directly run your application. Which means it's not necessary to manage, uh, manage some environmental variables which points to the list of your concrete DLLs. The DLLs are in... I will mention one more install command which I used recently and um, I use install command to install ffmpeg with all these kind of configuration for x64 architecture together with OpenCV4, GSDreamer, ffmpeg and DNM CUDA for the same architecture. And there was something which prompted me some manual needed prerequisites. I need to go to developer NVIDIA and manually download and install CUDNL. And after I did this prerequisite and installed this CUDNL from NVIDIA, I was able to re run this install command and everything was installed correctly. And I was able to use all these options and all these configurations I asked for. So, this is end of today's talk. Please subscribe to this channel. You can find everything on my website, which is Fun Vision Tutorials. VCPKG is already published and uh, there is uh, integration with Visual Studio. There is also article integration with CMake. I will do the manifest mode as well. Uh, 
and uh, you can read everything and follow for more tutorials. Thank you for watching and have a nice day.